Hi everyone, welcome to the Microsoft Online Tech Forum. My name is Aaron and I'm a Cloud Solution Architect from Microsoft Hong Kong, specializing in the data and AI solution area. This session is about ingesting data for analytics workloads. Specifically, we'll be looking at batch data processing scenarios that can be made easy with the use of a cloud-based data integration service called the Azure Data Factory. I'll firstly introduce and give you all a high-level overview of what Azure Data Factory is and how it works. Then you will be able to learn more about different components within the Azure Data Factory. And finally, I will show you a demo and walk you through a data ingestion scenario. So what is Azure Data Factory? Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based integration service that allows you to orchestrate and automate data movement and data transformation. Notice the use of the keywords within this sentence, orchestrate, automate, movement, and transformation. So before I jump into the details, you may already guess that this tool can help you to link up different other components, help you to build something that is repeatable in the future, copying data from one place to another place, and to manipulate the data so that it can turn into some formats or standards that you may want. So Azure Data Factory is designed to handle end-to-end -end data driven workflows, or sometimes we call them data pipelines. Typically, the first step will be to connect and collect data from various data sources, whether they are located on premises, in the cloud, such as some software as a service applications, different kinds of database systems, file shares, FTP, web APIs, and et cetera. So the next step is to move the data as needed to a centralized location for subsequent processing. So imagine a scenario where you have to build custom code to connect to this different system, and you may need to uh, mul use multiple tools for different data connectors, and that will be very painful and expensive to manage and maintain. With Azure Data Factory, you can use this one single surface to help you to move data from both on-premises and cloud environments to a centralized data store by leveraging the native data connectors within Data Factory. So the next step will be to transform and enrich. After data is available in the centralized data store, for example, the Azure Data Storage, then you may want to further process and transform the data either within the Data Factory or to call and leverage other compute services outside the Data Factory to perform the tasks for you. For example, such as using Azure HD Insight our managed Apache Hadoop service, Azure Data Bricks, our managed Apache Spark service, or simply by triggering some store procedure in the Azure SQL database. So after the raw data has been uh, refined into a business-ready consumable format, you may want to publish and load the data into Azure Synapse Analytics, or previously we call it Azure SQL Data Warehouse, or whichever analytics engine your users prefer. So Azure Data Factory can also integrate with Azure DevOps and GitHub, which allows you to incrementally develop and de deliver your data pipelines with support for CI/CD. So last but not least, after you have successfully built and deployed your data integration pipeline, you may also want to continuously monitor the scheduled activities to find out the success and failure rates. Azure Data Factory has built-in support to uh, pipeline to monitor the pipelines directly in the portal itself, or you may also want to do it programmatically via the APIs, PowerShell, uh, Azure Monitor, and etc. So now let us take a deeper look into the Azure Data Factory concepts. So first of all, we have link services. So link services are much like connection strings, which define the connection information to a data store, which can be a Azure Data Lake storage, an on-premise SQL server, an Oracle database, a file share, and so many more others that we support. So it can also represent an external compute resource, for example, such as uh, Azure Data Breaks or Azure HD Insight Hadoop clusters, and a lot more. Other than the link service, we also have a data set. So a data set represents the data structure within the data store. For example, you may have a SQL server as the data store, and 
a database table within the SQL Server will be the data set so that you can specify this table as the input or the output target. So within the Azure Data Factory, any processing step is called an activity. For example, it can be a copy activity to move data from one place to another place, or it can also be a transformation activity, which uh, let's say a Hive activity, which runs a Hive query on an external compute resource. All of these activities is grouped together and that's what we call a pipeline. So a pipeline is a logical grouping of activities that performs a specific task. So it is possible, also possible for a, a data factory to have different pipelines for different purposes. So within each pipeline, you may have a, a lot of different activities that represents a single task. So trigger is what determines uh, when a pipeline execution needs to be kicked off. For example, this pipeline is, represents a single task and you may want to uh, schedule the uh, running and automate the execution uh, of this series of chain activities under this pipeline. So by using the trigger. So the trigger is something that you can uh, think of it as some uh, scheduling and automation features that you can leverage. So on top of all these concepts, it is also useful sometimes to define parameters. So parameters are some key value pairs of arguments that allow you to dy dynamically assign values to the pipelines. So we also have uh, something called integration runtime. So integration runtime is where all the work is done. So this is the underlying compute infrastructure used by Azure Data Factory to provide different data integration capabilities. So finally, we also have control flow, which you can define conditions, branching, looping, and etc. So previously, I've talked a lot about the data stores. The good thing about Azure Data Factory is that we support 80 plus different data connectors out of the box as of today. And we will be continuously develop and add more new ones, which is another benefit of using a cloud-based data integration service. As you can see from this table, so other than the Azure sources, we also support other popular cloud services, such as Amazon S3, Redshift, Google Cloud Storage, BigQuery, some uh, database systems, whether they are on-premises or on the cloud, such as Oracle, MySQL, Process SQL, and uh, some popular software as a service applications, such as Salesforce. And of course, we also support generic protocols, such as RESTful APIs, ODBC, and et cetera. So Azure Data Factory offers uh, three different types of integration runtime. And as we mentioned before, Integration runtime is the underlying infrastructure that performs different tasks for you. So you can choose different kinds of integration runtime depending on the activity requirements and depending on your actual network configurations. The first one and the most simple one is called the Azure integration runtime. So this is a fully managed serverless compute offered by the data factory. So usually you can leverage this Azure IR for cloud to cloud integration scenarios. And that is the easiest way, easiest way to get started. For when things start to get a little bit more complicated. So let's say you would like to move data from your on-premises environment that has strict security requirements or some of the data sources are actually sitting within a virtual private network in the cloud. Then you can use a self hosted integration runtime, which you can install in your own machine or a VM on the cloud, so that it allows you to communicate with the Azure Data Factory securely, as it will only require you to make outbound connections without any inbound port or uh, opening requirements. So, last but not least, if you are an existing SQL Server integration service user, you would also be able to lift and shift your existing SSS workloads by using the Azure SSS integration runtime so that your historical efforts won't be wasted and you can natively execute the SSS packages directly within the Azure Data Factory. 
with this Azure SSIS runtime. So one of the most commonly used activity within Azure Data Factory would be the copy activity. High level, you can see that what it does is to connect to a data source, whether via the internet, VPN, etc., which is a dedicated connection uh, from your on-premise to the cloud, depending on your settings and depending on the sources, you can see in the middle, the integration runtime is the machine that actually does the work for you. So for example, it will help you to serialize the serialized data, compress the compressed data, and also perform some of the column mappings and et cetera. So finally, your data would be, after all these tasks would be loaded into a target destination. If you're using a file-based data source, Notice that the serialization and deserialization steps are no longer required. And we do support a lot of different file formats and compression methods. For example, we support Afro, binary, delimited text, JSON, or RC packet as of today. And depending on the which file format is being used, uh, the following codecs are also supported. Once you have landed the data on Azure, there are several different ways you can use to transform and process your raw data, either by calling an external compute resource that you have already developed some codes or scripts that you would like to leverage and to use that external compute resource to help you to do the data transformation task. Or you can also simply lift and shift your existing SSIS packages that you have and to run it on the Azure Data Factory. Finally, you can also do it directly within the Data Factory itself. There is a component called Data Flow, which enables users to perform data transformations without writing any codes. So as of today, we offer two types of Data Flow. Mapping Data Flow allows you to develop in a graphical way, and this is also scalable to handle data at scale as the underlying engine we use are uh, the scaled out Spark clusters. So without any knowledge of Spark programming, you are actually leveraging the capability of Apache Spark by leveraging this data flow capability. Wrangling data flow allows you to do data preparation with integration of Power Query, and you can make Power Query M functions uh, directly uh, within this interface, which some users may already be familiar with uh, this Power Query language. So now let us go back to a bigger picture and take a look at a typical batch processing workflow for data analytics. First of all, we have the data ingestion phase where we can leverage the copy activity within Data Factory for this purpose. So after the data is loaded into a centralized data storage, we can either use an external compute engine or the native data flows within Data Factory to perform the data preparations and transformations for us. Finally, we can specify a target destination for the cleansed and consumable data, such as putting it into a data warehouse so that uh, other business users can tap into it for virtualizations and serving their own applications. So as you can see, the entire end-to-end -end data pipeline can actually be managed and automated by the Azure Data Factory. So the good thing and the best thing about having Azure Data Factory for the entire workflow would be to centralize the monitoring, alerting, and all the enterprise-grade controls in the fully managed service. So for example, I'm able to monitor all the pipeline runs and to click into each pipeline to view the details of each activities within the pipeline. So now let me show you a quick demo on how to ingest data with the Azure Data Factory. So here you can see on my screen, this is a typical Azure portal environment. So if you would, you would like to get started with Azure Data Factory, you can simply search for Data Factory and then click on the Create button. Then here, you will be able to uh, quickly uh, just input the name, choose the version 2, which is the latest version, and we'll always recommend you to use version 2 going forward. 
and choose the corresponding subscription and resource group and to choose where you want this data factory to be in. For example, if you would like to use the Hong Kong data center, then I would choose East Asia. So uh, as we mentioned before, you can also enable the Git integration. So you can do it now, or you can also uh, do it later on in directly in the Azure portal, in the Azure Data Factory portal. Okay. So after I have provided all this information, I can create this uh, data factory within a few minutes, then you will be able to uh, see this data factory service. So on the screen, you can click on offer and monitor, which will take you to the Azure Data Factory portal. So here, uh, first of all, you can see that uh, this will have a lot of handy buttons for you to choose whether some of the quick tasks you can do. For example, uh, if you simply want to have a quick test by copying data from uh, your own, let's say a API or a web location to another location. So you can choose this copy data wizard, which is a very good, uh, uh, easy to use step-by-step uh, -step guide for you so that it will ask you for the source, uh, what's the connection, what's the data set, what's the destination, and etc. So underlying, it will help you to create all the link services, the data sets, the activity, and the pipeline. So you may also want to do it uh, yourself by directly going to this offer panel. So on this panel, you can see this is all the existing pipelines that you have, the existing data sets, and existing data flows. So for example, I may want to create a new pipeline now. So another good thing about Azure Data Factory is that we have a lot of templates available. So for example, you may want to see, do some uh, like typical tasks. For example, uh, let's say for this one, to copy data from an on-premise SQL server to Azure SQL. So uh, when you click on it, it will ask you for all the link service, and then you can create it here, or you can just choose an existing connection, and it will guide you through the all the steps so that you can create a pipeline very quickly. So let's say I would like to create a new pipeline for this demo purpose. So now within this uh, canvas, you can see that actually we support a lot of different activities. For, for the most simple one would be the copy data activity, but uh, good to know that uh, it, we, you, we can also connect or link to other external services. For example, Azure Function, uh, Databricks, HD Insight, and also uh, Azure Machine Learning Service, if you would like to trigger some ML pipeline executions after some kind of data transformations, you can also do that. So for the iteration and conditionals, this is where the control flow that I've just mentioned about. So within this copy data activity, so you can uh, see that. Uh, so what you will do is that you need to specify the source and the destination. So for the source, let's say I, this is, uh, you can see when I click on new. So this is all the data connectors that I've just mentioned. And you can take a quick look here. Or you can also uh, search back our documentations for all the details. So for this demo, I will just use a quick uh, API, web API endpoint for this purpose. So for example, I would like to choose uh, my source is actually a CSV file. So I will choose the delim delimited text. So after that, I will need to define the link service. So link service is the credentials or the connection information to your source. So here you can see that when whenever you're defining the link service, it actually uh, asks you to choose which integration runtime you would like to use. For example, for this simple scenario, I will just uh, leave it as the default, which is the Azure integration runtime that is managed by the Azure Data Factory. But in case uh, some of, let's say your source is a database sitting on premises, uh, behind the firewall, so you may want to have to install the self-hosted integration runtime and to choose it to use it uh, for the connection. So let's say for this demo, 
I have a GitHub link that is linked to my movies database CSV file. So that uh, so this for this uh, link, I don't have any authentication, but you can also choose it if you have it. And so I can quickly click on test connection to test whether I am able to su successfully connect back to the source. And here I would like to do some additional settings, such as uh, setting the first row as the header. And if you would like to import your schema, you can also do it here. So after the source is uh, OK, so let us move to the sync. That's, that's the destination. So again, we can choose the destination that you want. So for example, I would like to land the data into my data lake storage. Again, to choose the desired format. And to create a new link surface. So here we have a very good integration that uh, if you're using uh, the Azure, so there's a lot of, uh, they, it will already populate all the different uh, data lake storage accounts that you have. And you can also do a quick test and to create this lake surface connection. So after that, I can choose where I want to, which folder I would like to put the data in. So for this scenario, I'll just choose the demo folder. So after that, you can see that I can also specify all the additional formats under this to do the mappings. If this is, let's say, from let's say from a structured source to a semi-structured source, you may want to do a data mapping here. So, but for this simple case, I will just uh, finish this and to do a quick demo. But here you can see that actually you can also do a lot of different things within your uh, pipeline. For example, uh, when on success, you would like to trigger another uh, data transformation activity. For example, I would like to trigger data flow after the data is being landed to perform my transformations. Or probably on failure, I would like to send out an email to notify a, some, some person, for example. So that's also possible. And here you can see that, uh, so after, let's say I've already finished my pipeline, I can publish my pipeline and it will help me to do all the valid validations before I publish the pipeline. And after the pipeline is being published, you can also add some triggers here to schedule and automate the run, the, the, the execution. For example, so let me quick show you a quick demo. So you can choose to have some schedule to run it every hour, every day, every week, or you can uh, make it uh, to be event driven. So let's say let's say some new data is being created in your blob storage account. So you would like to trigger this pipeline, for etc. So for this simple uh, demo purpose, I'll just debug it directly into this in this screen. So this should run pretty quick as the source data is pretty small. Okay, so now we have see that uh, this is actually successful. So we can take uh, click on this icon to take a look at the details. And here you can see that, so this is the source information, how many data is being read, how many files, how many rows, and for the destination as well. And you can see the throughput here. So uh, here under under the uh, the screen, you can also see some of the uh, more detailed information. So probably it used uh, two seconds to do the queuing and six seconds to do the transfer. There's a detailed breakdown. So um, so let us take a look at the data flow. Oh, okay. So uh, to prove that this is actually being moved, I can go back to my data lake storage account. Go back to my demo folder, and then we can see that because I didn't specify any name, so it will just create for me. And I can actually view the uh, data details within the screen. Okay. 
So now let us go to take a look at the data flows. So you can directly create the data flow in this uh, with this plus icon. So let's say I already have something that is developed. So you can take a look. So when you click on this, you can add the source. So you choose which kind of data set you would like to use it to start with. After that, you can define a lot of different uh, common data transformation or data preparation activities such as conditions or uh, like uh, select some fields or like uh, filter, sort, and etc. For example, in this case, I need to first select the columns and uh, probably do some of the renaming. Second one, I would like to sort it in by the price in descending order. The third one would be to derive a new column based on the original price times two would be the new double price column. And finally, to load it into a uh, target destination. So it can be another data lake storage account. It can be a Azure SQL database, or it can be Azure Synapse Analytics and et cetera. Okay, so after this data flow is done, you can also chain it with other activities. For example, you would like to first do a lookup to check for the availability flag. And then on success, you will do a copying from original to a block storage. And then after successful again, you would like to trigger a notebook on Azure Data Bricks to do the ETL for you. Or probably you would like to use the data flow that I just show you to do it graphically. So on failure, you can also trigger some web hooks or web APIs to do whatever task you want. So finally, let us move on to the monitoring screen. So here on the monitoring panel, you can actually have a very nice dashboard to show you all the uh, summary and overview of all the pipeline activity and trigger runs. So you can optionally choose the filter here so that you can have a, uh, like a, a better look of the whole activities. So within each pipelines, you can also click into the pipeline to take a look at the details again. If there are several different activities, so for example, for this one, several different activities, you can see details of each activity. So here on the integration runtimes, you can see the health or the uh, settings of different integration runtime. So by default, this is the Azure integration runtime. So let's say I also have other Azure SSS runtimes. So you can see the health, whether it's running, stopped, or uh, there's any errors. And finally, on the alerts and metrics, you can also uh, define some of the custom alert rules. For example, uh, so let's say when you want to uh, trigger some alerts, uh, whenever a activity is failed or a pipeline is failed, you can do it here. And then you can configure which email or SMS to have the notification. So that this is a good thing about Azure Data Factory is that these are all native and you do not need to do other stuff in order to uh, build the APIs to uh, alert the users. So finally, uh, as you also know that uh, when you create the, the Azure Data Factory, it actually asks you about the uh, Git integration. You can also do it here so that you can see we support Azure DevOps and GitHub. And you can also uh, configure the information here if you didn't do it in the initial settings. So because the, actually, if you change, uh, look at this, if you change it into code view, so underlying actually all the uh, data factory um, components can be structured in this JSON format. So within this pipeline, you can see these are actually uh, uh, just some uh, simple JSON information so that you can use it with your uh, Git and then to do, let's say, some uh, DevOps approach and do CI/CD. Let's say this is a, a development environment. I would like to uh, do some push it to your Git and then do some validations and to automate the deployment to another and production environment of the da data factory. So this is also possible and can be done easily within the Azure Data Factory. Okay, 
So this is uh, pretty much the demo. So let me switch back to the slides and for the conclusions. To conclude, Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based data integration service that allows you to orchestrate and automate data movement and data transformation. It is designed to handle the end-to-end -end data driven workflows for batch data processing scenarios. Of course, if you're also interested to learn more about real-time streaming solutions, we do have a comprehensive offering on Azure, such as Azure Event Hubs with Stream Analytics or HD Inside Kafka plus Spark Streaming on Azure DataBricks, just for some examples. I will highly encourage everyone to learn more on Microsoft Learn, check out the documentations for step-by-step -step tutorials, and to explore other sessions in the Microsoft Online Tech Forum. If you have any questions, comments, or feedbacks, feel free to let us know, and thank you all for your time.